Hi everyone, this is lesson 5.4. We're gonna start lighting the scene. Um, now, I've been playing around with animations and uh, we've put some emissive materials in here as well, which is quite nice. Uh, they're all looking a bit bloomy at the moment because we've got so much light already in the scene. So let's just uh, tidy all this up, um, get all this out of the way. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this, this sky. You know, we don't have a theater outdoors in the open here. This is, this is a, a closed, Theatre in a black box, so let's get rid of that sky. So I'll zoom out so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go to Window, Rendering Lighting, which you may have seen me already demonstrate if you uh, saw me getting rid of the fog earlier. Um, and in here, there's loads of settings for controlling how you do lighting. Uh, and in the Environment tab, you've got the Skybox material. And if we click on the little radio here, there's some others that we could use. Um, you could literally employ <laughs> a lot of these very random textures as sky spheres, but well, we're just going to click on None. And there you go, it's now black. Um, and the environment lighting, we're gonna change from being skybox to a color, and we're gonna make that color black. So now we've got rid of all of the, the lighting that's coming from the sun. Um, now the sun is basically a big directional light, that's all it's doing, it's just that, that directional light indicates the direction that the sun is actually coming from. So if I click on my directional light up here, uh, I actually turned shadows off earlier because it was in the way, if I put those back on again, you can see it's, if I start spinning this round, you can see I've got like sun moving in a different direction. So um, this actually is one of the first things you might want to do if you want to start lighting a scene. If you just want to light it very simply, you can just turn off your shadows so that it's just all lit very uniformly and you've still got you know, direction of light. It's not, it's not creating shadows, but if the light's physically coming from behind something, it's not going to light it, it's got to be in front. And you can see how it's blooming out the the textures, you can see how that proscenium is revealing all its colours now. Um, so I like to think of this as a work light, to be honest. Uh, I like to leave one directional light in there for that. I might even rename it as work light. So it's quite helpful when you're doing 3D modelling, just as it would be on stage, to see what you're doing. Um, so for now, I'm going to turn that off. And look, my stage has gone very dark. The only thing I've got in there is uh, my emissive materials and this spotlight, which I left in earlier. Now, I'm going to delete that and start again because I want you to see the workflow. If I right click, light, spotlight, I've created a light. Now, where's it gone? It's right back there. Let's just drag it onto the front of the stage. It's not really showing up, and that's because the intensity is so low. It's, you know, it's a very black stage, it's got quite a lot of dark materials. So, let's increase our intensity. And there it is. And what's very curious is that that four stage is not taking light very well at all. So, you can see how it's cut off. It is actually creating a, a circle of light, but it's not really showing up, so I might want to play with the material on that later. And then I can sort of move it around, so you can see in the game engine there I'm lighting where the camera can see. Um, and really I think I want it a lot more intense than this. Now we can up the exposure for the whole scene. Uh, if we click on the post-process volume there should be a way of doing that in here. Well, that's the intensity, mode, weight. Now I'm thinking of Unreal Engine, aren't I? Or well, there's maybe some other things. Let's try putting an exposure as a component. No, don't let me do that. No. Add override. Post processing. Oh, maybe it's in here. Here we go. Uh, channel mixer. Gamma and gain. That's what we want, isn't it? Because gamma is how we um, we correct things for screen. Um, I think it's 2.2 is a magic number. Uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but the idea is, is that there is a difference between the amount of intensity of uh, colors on the screen versus on paper. So we have gamma correction in order to, to make it brighter. Um, and then gain is just gain. I'm frank, if I did the same thing, so we could just do that to make it brighter. Uh, we could even shift the color if we wanted to. I would suggest not getting too involved in all of this. Um, because we'll, we'll end up getting distracted by the quality of the light. You just want it to look right on stage. And you know, if I'm honest, if somebody said to me, said to a game designer, your lights are at 79 uh, intensity, they'd go, that's way too high. So yeah, something's gone wrong somewhere. But um, you know, again, I said this before, no excuses. This is the quick and dirty way of creating visualizations for, for Unity for the stage. Um, so we don't think too much about whether or not it's what game designers would expect or not. 
So I have done lighting already, but just to reiterate um, in this context, we have our range and we have our inner and outer spot angle. So range allows the beam to actually reach the, the thing it's trying to hit. And the further away you go, the brighter it gets because it's got a linear distribution. So the, the light intensity is dropping away the further uh, away it is from the, the object. If we tell it that it can go further, things that are closer then become brighter uh, in consequence. So you could also use the range to change intensity. Uh, I suggest making it long enough that if you wanted to move it around the stage, it would always cover everything. Um, you don't need to make it any longer than that because it's just unnecessary processing and the gizmo gets in the way. Um, and then the inner and outer angle is what creates the structure of your spot. So I'll make that really narrow. Let's just get a bit closer to it so we can see. I can make it quite sharp. Uh, let's just drag it out, out a little bit so I can have a nice soft edge and the inner angle makes it uh, quite, quite hot in the middle and then quite a large fall off, but, or I can make it a really sharp edge by making them the same. So that's now shutter to be really, really hard. Um, now, I've got it set to, in mode to real time at the moment. So that means as I'm moving it around, it's updating in real time. That's fine for game engines. I'd, I mean, we've got a good computer, it's, just leave it there, it's fine. But if you're going to be using uh, other devices like a VR headset, you might want to put it on mixed. It looks the same when you do things here. But what happens is that it's constantly trying to update. You can see in the corner there it says its global illumination has been baked. It's constantly updating that. So every time it moves, it bakes the information in um, to the scene, and then it will only update it again if you try to move an object or, or the light, which is a way of optimizing it. So I'm going to leave it on real time for now. Uh, shadows are set to soft shadows. I could do hard shadows, which uses less processing, but you'll get hard shadows as opposed to the nice little soft edge that we're used to. And no shadows, just like directional light, it'll just light everything, uh, which isn't very accurate. So you want soft shadows. And then we've got color as well. So it's kind of set to a sort of tungsten color at the moment. Um, nothing else to say here, apart from you might want to put in a cookie. And a cookie is a gobo. Uh, and I can't see where it goes. It used to be in here somewhere, I'm sure it was. So I might come back to that later, but the idea is that a cookie could sit in a slot on your light and create a, a pattern that, uh, like a gobo. So I'll come back to that later because that should be here somewhere, I'm sure it is, and I'm obviously just missing something. So let's put in a few of these. Now I've created one. I'm just going to neaten it up a little bit, stick it in the middle of the my, my proscenium is like a sort of what we call a pipe end wash. Go across the stage like this. I'm going to lift the intensity even more. And oh, this really does duplicate itself and start to, to, to magnify. Uh, you get uh, layers of light and it, it does, the intensity does quickly pop up. So I'm just going to do in the scene editor, control C, control V to copy it and move it across. And you see straight away there was some lighting changes there. So I could do that again and again. I'm going to put one in each bay. Um, yeah, I started life as a lighting designer in theatre, so that's that's kind of my thing. Now that's a bit ugly, it's picking on the side of the stage, it's a sort of time when you might want to go by or something you can use to control that, but you know, if you're a designer, maybe what you're interested in is just trying to create that look. So now we've got an idea of what the light looks like all from one side. A little bit messy, let's maybe just tidy that one up, so it's not, as we would say, splashing across the portal. Um, now the other thing you might want to do, I did mention the directional lights are quite handy for this, you could just put in a directional light that would have done that same job because it can do what all of those lights are doing from one direction because it's like having multiple lights at once. The whole idea is that it doesn't have um, a cone, it's just it's all straight parallel lights. It doesn't matter where this is in the world in terms of position, it only matters which way around it's rotating. So we can create light coming like really as like a side light. So if I had loads of lights down here on boom positions, just going straight across the stage, that's kind of what this is doing at the moment. So it's a quick and dirty way of creating that same look. And you can move it right out of the way so it's not being seen by anyone. I might actually put the other way around. It doesn't matter that it's on stage left, but if I wanted light coming across the stage from this side across, um, I can just rotate it across like this. It doesn't matter that it's on the wrong side of the stage. The light is coming from this side and coming in. So there you go. We've got light out from both sides, two different systems. So one like as a, a flat on look and the other one from the top. Now the other light I'm going to add into this is um, a point light. I'm just going to put a couple of these at the back of the stage here so that 
it worked like working lights and people can see themselves getting on off stage but it also just had a nice little bit of bit of light to the to the stairs now you can't see anything at the moment because it's literally so dim if I move it really close to this this black here you can sort of see a bit of light but not really it's um it's too black and the intensity is too low so let's just pick this up there we go so now we've got lots of light it's all bleeding in from the side there it's light at the back cloth a little bit let's just move that over a little bit see I've got a, a black piece of masking here and it's doing some funny rendering there actually it's not um it's not lighting nicely on that that bit of masking because like there it should be lighting it and it's not and there it's it is, it's just flicking on and off, so something odd happening there with the way it's rendering that light. Um, but I'm still going to move it to about there and I'm going to make it blue. Because it's going to be sort of a bit of, bit of context at the back there, just so it's not disappeared into the, into the background. And I'm going to bring another one across as well. So you see, you don't have to be a lighting designer to do this. I mean, obviously, I'm a, I like to say I'm a lighting designer. Um, you can, <laughs> don't judge me on this, but you can see how, how easy it is just to throw some lights around. Now the other thing I'd want to do is, let's see, I've got it here, the area light. The area light is a, it's a big square, it's a big square panel, and if I drag it out here so you can see it, you can see it's it's a big square and you can make this um, uh, appear as, as, a, as a square of light. So I've got rectangle or a disc, depending on what it look like. It is only baked, so you don't see it until you turn on your game engine, which makes them a little bit tricky to work with. But these work a bit like studio panels in a film studio. And where I find them quite useful is lighting backcloths. So I might just bring one over here, pull it all the way up, and then I want to make it really wide. Now I'm not going to do this as a scale tool, I'm going to use this, make it wider here, because that way it doesn't change the intensity of the light. If you scale an area light, it would increase its intensity. Um, you want to create the width that you want it to, to take up. And I'm going to make it a little bit more, oh, I'm not using the right gizmo there. I was rotating it in a weird direction. To make it a little bit straighter to the ground. Just lift that up right up here. And now I'm going to increase the intensity. And we can't see anything because it doesn't work yet. Um, got car shadows turned on. And I'm going to leave it sort of white. So that's just sort of wash down that, that cloth there. They're kind of unhelpful because you can't see what you're doing with them until you, until you turn it on. But never mind. Right, one more light just for luck. I'm going to just give myself a nice strong backlight. So I'm going to put in a spotlight. I'm going to drag it into the same sort of bay as my area light. Point it down stage a bit. Now I can see the thrust room that I'm getting from the uh, from the object. It's, it's really helpful to better know if I'm cutting off on the on the cloth or not, so I'm going to make it nice and wide, like that. I'm going to increase the intensity. Let's come back to the front so we can see. Ah, now that's something else that you may have noticed. It's not going to do anything because the range is so so small. It's not actually intersecting the stage, so I need to increase my range like that. And I'm going to make it really tall, so it goes all the way through. Increase my intensity quite a lot, and I'm going to make it like a sort of a, a lavendery colour. So it's, this is my sort of strong keyed backlight on my on my actors. Now it's not really intersecting with the light, there's so much light coming from the side at the moment, it's not looking looking all that. Um, now if you do feel like this is looking a bit dark, it could be your materials are too dark, and I'd sort of agree with you, um, it does have that sort of oppressive look. So maybe let's just have a look at these materials and see if they, they need to be made a little bit brighter. Let's just click on this black and lift it up a little bit. Ooh. Now obviously quite a lot of the, the set is built using this material, so I'll change it once, it changes all of them at once. See, because if I take it all up to white there, it's looking quite uh, quite ugly. It's revealing quite a lot of things. Um, and then I do the same thing to my four stage, my floor mat. Just lift that up a little bit. There we go. And now it's picking up the light a bit nicely as well. And you can see the difference in the textures between the two. So that's just balanced it all out quite nicely. And now I'm seeing my, my blue backlight coming through a little bit. And if you're wondering what all this cutting off is, it is just the way game engines have to process um, lights, depending on how far away you are and where, where it's seeing things, it's, it processes it differently to try and um, save on, on rendering and things. I'm not using that light, so I'm just going to turn it off, uh, which isn't very helpful. So there we go. Right, we'll go with that. That's 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 a bit of lighting. 
Um, that's kind of theatrical. And in the next lesson, we are going to look at how we can add audio to this as well. Audio's you know, kind of useful um, for visualizations, uh, but we can also link it into the, uh, the controls we're going to build later in Playmaker. And if you are building an immersive experience, you'll almost certainly want to put audio in at some point. Uh, everything we've done so far, I've been calling it a visualization, but all of this applies equally to making uh, your own immersive experiences in VR or, or game engines. So, um, it's important to cover audio, and then we're going to look at video textures after that as well. So that sort of rounds off the, the, the controls and all the things you might want to import into, into the engine. So I'll see you in the next lesson.